Welcome to Copperbell Mines. I haven't watched these videos since I first... since they allowed the ability to uh, auto-skip them. First thing as the tank, always check and make sure that your dance is on. Because when you get level synced... So when you get level synced, it strips off all your buffs, except for all of the buffs that you can give yourself. Uh, food buffs will stay, but if you've got like a regen on yourself, and you change jobs, you'll lose the regen. Got the key? They got the key. Open the sealed blasting door. Here we go. Wait for everybody to get on the lift. Lift. And we've got more trash. Now, Copper Bell is one of the few dungeons where some mobs will just stop facing you. These two groups, if I continued running, would uh, stop and reset. But since we all look like we need experience. Oh. So, you can get um, a character to high level without ever having healed a dungeon with the Arcanist. The Arcanist is a job that, well, the Arcanist is the class that splits into um, Dollar, this person is, and Summoner. So the Arcanist is essentially an experiment that they did not they did not like having to uh, balance between the two. There's there's a lot of history there. Especially with uh, the community and whatnot and one of my friends is very vocal about what they do, how Sculler has gotten no love. So we're gonna do a stun and a stun. Move out of the AoE. Grab that guy. Now, the first boss in Copper Bell is... You, you fight a bunch of waves of monsters, and then you fight the boss, and the boss has the tank. Don't care what class you are as tank. Uh, you can make the fight go a lot shorter. By stunning the boss when he starts casting, um, oh, I don't know what the skill name is. It basically makes him more impervious to damage, so he takes like 20% uh, of the damage that is inflicted, but he only starts casting it at, at about half life. So getting him down there first works, 
and then stunning him. And he starts casting it. And you'll notice that, you know, as we progress through the dungeons, they start using more skills that have to be dodged. And each dungeon will be different. <coughs> With, um, the abilities of the of the enemies. There was even one dungeon where you had to, um, there were gremlins that would go around and they would basically hurt people's feelings. And the only way to get rid of the debuff was to type target them and type slash console which you know most people don't know but it was something that hasn't been done since so <laughs> sometimes things are good to be uh, tested out but they don't survive because nobody likes doing it that Unless you've got that specifically queued up on your hotbar. Okay, first boss. Start by killing Brigand. And... boss is kind of annoying as a tank because actually the party's doing what they should be doing in this that's standing together wait everybody comes to the same spot okay you see I cannot I can't target the target it until it comes within view so keep that in mind I'm dealing with oh Yawn. In dealing with these dungeons, keep in mind that if you cannot target the thing, there's a good chance that you can't see the thing from where you're standing. I mean, you can physically see it on your screen, but the pathing in the game won't let you select it. So, with what I was talking about with the uh, Black Mage, he always got the, the blue twirling around him. And now it's the red. Switching between fire and um, the ice. Regenerate his mana. Crap, I missed it. I was looking away when that happened, but somebody else got it, it looks like. Did your carbuncle interrupt that? Good. Good carbuncle. Got those. Don't need those. Now these guys, I'm just going to run through. Come on. They reset. Come on. Come on. Okay.
some bosses, some enemies will reset. These guys, as much as I'd love to pull them down into one of the places that we're supposed to be going, uh, these guys will reset if we get too far away from the center room. So when I said that some of these early dungeons had puzzles, you have to collect uh, 12 ounces, or onzes as they say in the game, of fire sand to drop into the little powder cubby up there, and they drop off the blasting caps. Blasting cap dies. Like that, it drops some fire sand. So we'll pick that up. We'll go over to the other side. And grab off of that one. I feel, you know, going through these dungeons and explaining the mechanics of the different fights and how to make it through the dungeon is helpful as well because a lot of a lot of the old players like myself, um, we've been through these dungeons so many times. It's not funny. And, you know, even the ones that we don't go into often because they're not uh, in the roulette as much, Oh, thank you. Even the ones that aren't in the roulette as much, you still learn. There, there, there are things that people don't remember about them. Somebody gonna grab that? He's grabbing it. Okay. Alright, this boss, there is mechanics that have to be paid attention to. Um... I'm going to basically hold threat on this thing. And the bomb, after about 20 seconds, will blow up. And it cuts it down into two. And we just repeat that. Now, second time it gets pulled, I will grab the bomb, and there's going to be an ad that appears right there. And if that thing gets close to the blasting cap, it'll destroy it. Or it'll it'll attack it. Okay, that's the second split. There's going to be one more split, and then you can DPS down these things. Pink. Pull it over here. Sure to get everybody in there. And there we go. Boom. And now they are small enough that we can kill them. So this fight can be difficult if you don't understand what you're supposed to be doing. So why I explained it as we went through it. I want people to excel in the game. You loot the fire sand, you put it in the cubby, then you blast it. Now to spawn the bomb, you had to interact with the, uh, the, the 
detonation timer thingy. The push. The plunger, that's the word. there are going to be dungeons that you encounter that are not part of the main storyline. Mostly a lot of the side mission stuff. Yeah, that makes absolutely perfect sense. The side mission stuff is stuff that's not part of the main storyline. Of course it is. That was me not doing what a tank should do, and that is I had something behind me. But it's kind of a caster, so I don't think it matters. I thought I moved out of that fast enough. So, this is a dungeon where you can inadvertently pull a lot of stuff if you rush forward immediately after the second boss. There's going to be a lot of enemies. There we go. Now the last boss. The last boss is an actual boss. And I'll explain how you were originally supposed to do the, the fight versus how it's done now. So, because of the way that damage has been altered over the, the years. Um, even low-level players have higher uh, damage that they do. Like, this used to be a half-hour dungeon. And we're getting through it in about 20 minutes. So, Mechanics have changed a bit, and they're going to change again come... Yeah, we'll, we'll go grab the chest for them. Somebody could use that. Wait, since I have all of them, did it give me the sword? It gave me the sword. Wonderful. Next would be... Oh, it gave me the, the shield. Nice, I've got all the gear. Slaves no more. Free, free. At the end of every dungeon, it will reward you with a piece of gear suitable to your class. It might be useful, it might not. Um, did it give anything? No, it didn't. Alright. So this guy... The original way you were supposed to fight this guy was... He's gonna run over and start attacking the boulder. And when he's doing that, he's basically making room for more enemies to come in. Adds will come out of the, the boulder, the hole that's left there. So, he's going to attack this boulder, he's going to kill this boulder, adds will come out and they'll go over there and start attacking the other one that's over there, so that more adds come out. And originally you had to pick up the adds or tank this guy over by the adds, so that you could, like, AoE it down, but... By the time they break through to bring in more adds, he'll be dead. So, the second ad should be coming shortly, and it takes two of them to break that down, and we're already almost completely done. I mean, by the time it breaks, he'll be dead. So, the original way is you kill the ads, but you can just tank and spank, and just burn the boss. 
because the adds only turn on the players after that second boulder is down, and if they do break through, I'm ready to pick them up. That's why I got the camera in this angle. Leveled up. Him dead. And that is Copper Bell Mines. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it informative. If you want to see more Final Fantasy XIV videos, please like, follow, and subscribe. The usual YouTube stuff. To catch me live, check out my Twitch, linked in the description. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.